Um, the why, I suppose um, it was as I was, was mentioning, um, I was searching for the truth, I was searching for the meaning of life, I was searching for the, the answers to the question of, uh, you know, what is it all for, what is uh, the purpose of our existence, why am I here, what is this life all about? And um, having searched through various different religions and read many books and having been brought up in a uh, fairly, uh, yes, definitely a strict uh, Christian background, um, I came across the Qur'an, a translation of the Qur'an, and in reading this translation of the Qur'an, I found within it something so unique, something so special, that I decided by the time I had nearly accomplished reading it, that um, if I had ever read a book that was from God, this was the one. Mm -hmm. So that was the thing that really, uh, really changed me around. Uh, although I was had uh, an association with Muslims for a long time, I mean, I, my father worked in Egypt, and uh, so I used to spend my holidays there, and I knew Muslims and so on and so forth. But it was not until I really read this translation of the Quran, and this is the thing that really convinced me that it must be from God, from mm -hmm. the Creator. I've I've never actually heard myself of anyone becoming a Muslim because of such an experience. Right. So, I mean, maybe there have been. Um, but uh, yes, I think this is something that um, you will find common uh, amongst people who have chosen Islam. And I think it's worth mentioning, I had it in my mind to mention this as well, that everybody has to choose Islam. Hmm. You chose Islam at some time as well, Shabir. Yes, exactly. I mean, a lot of people think, uh, the new Muslim, the white Muslim, <laughs> the uh, you know, the, the black Muslim. The, you know, we chose this. Everyone at some stage in their life has to make a choice to be a Muslim. You should be, although you were brought up in a Muslim family, probably, and and so on and so forth. You made a choice, a conscious decision at some stage in your life to choose Islam. There's exactly. lots of people brought up in Muslim families who don't make that conscious decision mm -hmm. to choose Islam. They make a conscious decision to go in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't really know why we are thought to be so special, but, <laughs> <laughs> but alhamdulillah. Um, so uh, this, this choosing of Islam, as I said, was mentioning, this come from, uh, came from uh, reading the Qur'an, contemplating, thinking. And that is something that I find generally that is one of the things that has impressed me about Islam until today. And I used to say Islam is the religion of reason, and maybe that's not quite a, an accurate way or, or a you know, proper thing to say. But I have never found a religion, and uh, I don't think anyone, and I am sure 100% no one could ever find a religion that is reasonable, like Islam is reasonable. And I say it in the sense that you will not find a single belief, a single thing that Islam is teaching you, or Islam is telling you to believe, except that it is compatible with sound reasoning. And that is one of the beautiful things about Islam. And that's why I think you find that thinking people become Muslims, not people who rely on some sort of mystical, sort of uh, emotional experience. Okay? Uh, because really, how can truth be something that is manifest through some emotional, mystical, strange experience? I mean, if that's the case, then you know, David Koresh and the son of Sam and, and, and uh, so many other extraordinary, crazy mass murderers and people who do all sorts of extraordinary things. If you look at their psychology and their accounts of their life, a lot of them have these type of extraordinary experiences, like the son of Sam, a dog talked to him and he thought this dog was a messenger of God. I mean, you know, so I mean, this is sort of extraordinary things, but Islam, no. Islam is a, is a religion, it asks you to use your mind. You find the Qur'an again is, is saying, in this are signs for those who think, in, in this are signs for those who have understanding, and this is signs for those who are wise. When the angels uh, uh, greet the people, or rather not greet them, but when the angels who are guarding the gates of hellfire, they say to the people who are going to the hellfire, didn't someone come to you? Didn't someone warn you? And the people who are going to the hellfire, say, they said, yes, and if only we had used our aql, if we only used our intelligence, we wouldn't now be in the fire. It's an indication that 
Islam is something that you're going to come at and arrive at through using your intelligence, not merely some act of faith. I accepted Islam and I went to the mosque for a bit and so on and so forth. But um, the truth is, the moment I encountered the first bit of difficulty, um, you know, that was it. I sort of, uh, I didn't ever say that I'm not a Muslim. I always used to tell people. Uh, over a glass of wine and uh, <laughs> oh, you know yes I'm Muslim Islam is fantastic I mean I'm, I I remember once I was at a at a party and I was completely um, intoxicated I think would be the polite way of putting it and I was sitting there telling a group of people about how fantastic Islam was and I was saying well if I wasn't so drunk I could tell you a bit more <laughs> and and uh, and this is really the case um, so I didn't actually I mean the thing was I believed it and and I I, I never denied that this is what I held to be the truth. But in reality, I was not any different. In reality, I was, I was still eating bacon butties, uh, bacon butties and bacon sandwiches, right? <laughs> and drinking alcohol and all the rest of it and everything like that. So it took two years of real mental, spiritual torment, I could say, because that's what it was. It was the worst two years of my life. And I always tell people that the person who is the worst off is the person who knows the truth and doesn't act upon the truth. The worst one is the one who knows the truth and doesn't follow it. There's a time when you're, they call it blissfully ignorant. But when you know the truth and you don't follow that truth, that is, the, that is if there's hell on earth, that's what it is. If there's hell on earth, that's what it is. And that's what I went through. But alhamdulillah, I mean, I look back on it and, and I, I, it was ultimately through Allah's mercy, only through Allah's mercy, a strengthening experience. And when I did come to Islam, alhamdulillah, I think because of that experience, I, I came to Islam much stronger and and, uh, and and much more uh, with complete determination not to repeat that sort of error again mm -hmm. but it is a problem and I'm sure that lots of brothers and sisters out there in different ways who become Muslim and who choose Islam encounter that same type of problem uh, to change their life around to and it is it is a very 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 major change it's not like you know you just change a few things Right now, I believe in Jesus, and that, you know everything goes on. Right? No, I mean your life changes round almost completely, and that is difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's easy for who, whomsoever Allah makes it easy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always think that the best answer to that is how Allah describes it in the Quran, and it is exactly the way Allah describes it. It is really the truth, and I would say that Islam. To be a Muslim, to be in Islam and out of Islam, the difference between being a Muslim and being an unbeliever is the difference between life and death. Mm -hmm. It's that, that's how extreme it is and it really is that different. It's like before I was dead and now I'm alive. It is that different. It's like before, and I, this is how I think of it, before I was in a room, a vast huge room, which is totally pitch dark. And this room is surrounded by obstacles. So you're trying to find your way around this room. And as you're trying to find your way, you keep hitting these things and injuring yourself. And you, this is how you are stumbling around in the darkness, crawling around, stumbling around, injuring yourself, battering yourself. Islam is like you open the door and you step out into the daylight. Mm -hmm. That's how it is. That's how the difference between being a Muslim and not being a Muslim. It's that different. I think the first thing is that you have to be very sincere and you have to be very honest about yourself. That's very difficult to do that. And uh, that's very important to be sincere. If you're sincere and you're really sincere, I'm sure that Allah will guide you to the truth. But it's not like you have to find the door. Really because it's there. You know, if anyone's watching this video, well we're telling you about Islam. There's the light for you. Mm -hmm. Okay? If you deserve it, Allah will guide you to that light. That's the reality. If you are deserving of it, Allah will guide you to that light. Because we have to understand that Allah chooses who He wants for His guidance. And He chooses people who are deserving of it. This is the reality. Okay? So, really, one needs to seek that guidance. One needs to pray for that guidance. And you need to seek it with your mind, with your heart, with your soul. This is the way to go forward. But if we're talking about how does someone who's now found the truth, they've discovered Islam, maybe someone, and it happens, some people for years 
have been reading the Quran and reading books about Islam. And I think maybe after the you know second month, they'd already knew that Islam was the truth. But somehow they kept telling themselves, "I have to read more. I have to read, read more." A lot of people are afraid to make that you know that step, you know that final step. So I mean, you know, there's nothing to do it except you have to do it. You know, you have yeah. to take that step. You know, once mm -hmm. you know that Islam is the truth, you need to embrace Islam. You need to enter into the fold of Islam. Mm -hmm. And for those who have done that, how do you proceed? Simple thing, simple thing, very simple. If you hold on to it, God willing, you will never go astray, and you will be guided on the right path. And that is to guard the prayers. Those five prayers, those prayers five times a day. If you guard them, and it doesn't. If you do anything, if you can't do anything except that, if you guard those prayers and you make sure you say those prayers, you will find that this will be one of the surest ways to change your life around, mm -hmm. without a doubt. As I was saying, Allah guides who He wants to guide. In this noble religion, we have been ordered to take into account the process of cause and effect. Mm -hmm. This is something that God has put in the creation. This is something that we are ordered to deal with. So, the cause and effect is that if you call people to Islam, the effect is that normally you will expect people to embrace Islam. The Prophet Muhammad ﷺ did not receive revelation and then just sit in his home. He went and told people about it. Now, primarily and fundamentally, we need to do that as Muslims because that is our absolute obligation. No one should think that this is something recommended or I can do it if I want to or you know no everybody is obliged an obligation upon them to call others to Islam the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said call people to my message or pass on my message even if it is one verse of the Quran if you know one verse of the Quran and you understand it it is your obligation to pass it on and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he took a vote an oath he took an oath, wal asr, inna linsana lafi khusr, illa alladheena amanu wa amilu salihat wa tawassaw bil haqqi wa tawassaw bil sabr. Allah swore by time that all of mankind are in a state of loss, illa alladheena amanu, except those who believe, wa amilu salihat, and those who do righteous actions, wa tawassaw bil sabr, wa tawassaw bil haqq, wa tawassaw bil sabr. And they join together in the mutual teaching of truth. And they join together in the mutual teaching of patience. So, if you do not involve yourself in teaching the truth and being patient upon teaching that truth, because you will never succeed in calling people to Islam except with patience. If you don't do that, you are still amongst those who are lost. Even if you believe and even if you do righteous actions, if you don't participate in one way or another in dawah, in calling people to Islam, in calling to the truth, in enjoying the right and forbidding the evil, and patient upon it, then you're going to be of those people who are lost. Mm -hmm. Can you share with us some uh, methods, some ways in which uh, individuals can participate in, in Dawah? Well, there's lots of ways. I mean, from the, the first way that one can participate in, in giving Dawah is that you, your, you equip yourself with the knowledge and the information that you need in order to be able to convince others that Islam is the truth. Mm -hmm. And that their religion is false. It's not only, by the way, of convincing someone that Islam is true. There's always a, uh, a how can we say, a, 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 a double method. We, we convince people that Islam is true, but we also need to show them that they are upon falsehood. In fact, it usually comes the other way around. You have to show them that what they're upon is falsehood, and then after that, you illustrate to them how Islam is true. This is essential. This is implicit even in the actual shahada, la ilaha illallah, the negation and the affirmation that there is nothing worthy of worship except Allah. The negation, nothing, no God worthy of worship, illallah except Allah. Mm -hmm. So there's the affirmation and, sorry, the negation and the affirmation. So you need to get the knowledge, you need to get the information. And you can do that, you can participate it either on, either on an individual level or on a wider level, like those people who give lectures and talks and so on and so forth, like yourself and myself, this is one way you can do it. Uh, you should start generally anyway with your family. This is the first people you should start with. They have the most obligation upon you. And then after that your friends 
and then the people nearest you and so on and so on and so forth so this is the method insha'Allah calling them first and foremost to the oneness of Allah not to what are really side issues you know like uh, I don't know why do we chop the hand of a thief <laughs> or try to explain to people this and that these are really side issues the most important thing is to explain them why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone should be worshipped mm-hmm. and if you feel that you can't do that okay you should still tr- strive to but there's other ways you can uh, you can distribute literature you could you can maybe Allah has gifted you with the ability to make money then you can give your money to people who are giving dawah you can help those organizations you can help those institutions that are concerned with propagating Islam maybe Allah has not given you the gift of the gab maybe you have good organizational talents then you could get involved in organizing or helping to organize some activities and so on and so forth one doesn't have to think that the only way to give dawah is by sitting there like you know I do on the soapbox and speakers corner you know telling people about Islam or so on there's lots of different ways that you can get involved